Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to check out the brand new Oppo Reno 5 Pro 5G. This smartphone is featuring a 6.5 inch display with 90 Hz refresh rate and of course 65 watt with the SuperVOOC 2.0 charging speeds here. And last but not least, of course, one of the other main features is the fact that it's featuring the Dimensity 1000 Plus processor. This is TK and this is my gaming review and all our overall impressions of the Reno 5 Pro 5G from Oppo. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So here we have it, the brand new Oppo Reno 5 Pro 5G. Uh, again, this is the global version of this officially announced not that long ago. And what we see here essentially is uh, the smartphone itself is definitely an upgrade to some of the other aesthetics or the other features that we've seen in the past from other Reno devices. Now, first and foremost, you'll notice that the backing here is definitely very eye-catching. It changes color depending on how the light is hitting it. Uh, at some point, you're able to get it to match the color of the box, but of course, other times you're able to get it to go a little bit more orange, a little bit more purple. Very, very nice. You have a quad camera setup here in the back, a 64 megapixel primary shooter that's going to be able to give us 4K 30 frames per second, an 8 megapixel ultra wide lens, a 2 megapixel macro, and a 2 megapixel mono lens. On the front, we have a 32 megapixel front facing punch hole camera present on the top left, capable of giving us 1080p 30 frames per second video. Now, the display that we have here is also very unique. It's a 6.5 inch Super AMOLED display with a 20 by 9 aspect ratio, full HD plus running at 90 hertz. But one of the other benefits that we have once we get into the gaming system is the ability of using is the ability of being able to use up to 180 hertz touch sampling, which enables us to actually have a much better gaming experience. Of course, HDR10 plus support and up to 1100 nits peak brightness whenever playing outdoors. Uh, the processor, as I mentioned to you guys at the beginning of this video, is the MediaTek 1000 Plus. Uh, based on what I've been able to basically gather from this overall usage, is not going to really be a big factor into what you guys are going to be experiencing here. But if you wanted to look at benchmarks just to kind of get a reference of it, I did run basically Geekbench on it. And from a historical reference, I ran it twice. I ran it once with standard mode and then once with performance mode, which means it boosts the performance of the CPU. So standard mode was able to get a 727 uh, to 3027. And when I ran the boosted mode, I was able to go to 785 and 2500. Now it did drop on the multi-core, but that's because it's multi-cores and they're running higher frequencies. Under compute also, we definitely saw an improvement in performance when we went into the performance enhancement. And both of those things are able to basically be activated in the uh, gaming system once we go into gaming. When we go into the game system, we're able to actually turn on um, basically the ability of turning on performance mode, balance mode, or uh, basically low power mode. It's actually called competition mode here, which gives us the ability of getting the overclocking performance. Uh, the wallpaper, if you see here, that's actually part of ColorOS 11.1, an update already to ColorOS 11 that we saw with the Find X2 Pro. And this is a stable version, not a beta, so it's out of the box going to give us uh, the experience that you want. Uh, we have the Google Feed here present on the left, an app drawer option if you want to be able to install that. Uh, there are some applications pre-installed in here, and of course, uh, you have GameSpace. I installed Twitter, Instagram, and of course, some of my games, Call of Duty Mobile, Genshin Impact, Modern Combat Versus, Asphalt 9, PUBG Mobile, course uh, Geekbench 5 and I installed the Kishi uh, app because we're going to talk about using it with the Kishi controller which I always feel like is the best gaming controller for Android. Now I'm pretty sure you want to know what comes in the box. We get the 65 watt charger that's capable of charging our 4350 milliampere battery with SuperVOOC 2.0. Of course gives us very fast recharge speeds. We have a USB type C to USB type A cable and of course a pair of USB headphones since uh, the Reno 5 Pro 5G does not include a headphone jack. Lastly, they do include a, a clear case that's included in the box uh, for us to be able to protect our device and of course still be able to enjoy the colors that come through. When we start looking around the actual device, on the right we have a power button, on the top we have basically one of the microphones and a nice little design for Reno. And you can see it right there, designed for Reno logo that's present ever so nicely at the top. Um, on the left we have a volume rocker, nothing else. On the bottom we have a dual SIM tray supporting uh, 5G technology but no expandable storage. So we don't also have an expandable storage on this one. A bottom firing speaker with a uh, mono experience here since we don't have stereo speakers. A USB type C that's gonna be for data charge as well as headphones uh, with the included headphones in the box. Or of course you can just use uh, the brand new, uh, you know, the Enco X uh, headphones that was also announced. Unfortunately, we don't have those, but if I do, I will make a video for you guys on that. As I mentioned to you guys at the beginning of this video, we are running Android 11 with uh, ColorOS 11.1. 
Dimensity 1000 Plus, octa-core, 12 gigs of RAM, uh, 256 gigs of internal storage available on this model. And of course, uh, this is running the latest security patch update and it is the Oppo Reno 5 Pro 5G. One of the really new features that we also have here is the ability of having a 90 hertz refresh rate on this display. Now you're able to keep it either on full-time 90 hertz, on ultra high, or take it down to 60 hertz. Your preference obviously will basically impact the way the gaming experience is gonna be on this device. Uh, personalization, all of the custom uh, customizations that we have with ColorOS 11 are here. So we have the theme ability, the ability of customizing the wallpapers, custom made always on display panel, which I just made this one specifically for my account. And of course, uh, you're able to also customize uh, not only the icon styles, the app layout, uh, the fingerprint style has some really nice uh, options actually that were added in here that was really uh, recently added also to ColorOS 11. Uh, notification drawer access and of course the horizon or the edge lighting to get notification for either just incoming calls or uh, basically just normal notification and you can customize all of those. Uh, the home screen also shares the same experience if you go in here you have the wallpaper icons layout and you're able to go into widgets transitions and of course under more customizing the grid size all of the things that you normally expect uh, opening up animation speed here everything works very nice and as you can see there's no problems at all i understand that some people may be questioning the uh, mediatek processor here but this is definitely one of the better newer models that we have the dimensity 1000 plus is definitely uh, capable of handling our device and as you saw with the benchmark very powerful uh, processor now when it comes to gaming as i mentioned to you guys at the beginning we installed a few games here to be able to get a good experience so pubg mobile call of duty mobile genshin impact asphalt 9 and modern combat versus now modern combat versus is the one the only game that's fully compatible with the kishi controller so i'm going to give you guys a little bit of an example of how things go but in here you can customize a few things you can customize the experience by either overclocking the processor basically pushing the system to its limits of course having um, blocking notifications and not getting any interruptions here so uh, the one thing i want to mention to you guys is that flex drop is also still here so this one actually worked but unfortunately it seems like it doesn't work here so let's go ahead and open up this is the, the, one of their new uh, options that we have within color os 11 and of course here it gives us the ability of basically minimizing it and i can just basically bring it in I can click it and then bring it into the side and it'll sit on the side basically as a notification if I want to be able to access it later on. So here I can click it, bring it back. And of course, one of the other options that we can do is close it right away. Now, I'm pretty sure you're also wondering about what are some of the new features that we have within the gaming system as I think that's what when, where some of the optimizations were done in ColorOS 11.1. Uh, first and foremost, we have Hyperboost 4.0 to be able to extend the gameplay and make sure that we have a really nice, smooth gameplay, as well as instant game back, meaning jumping back into a game and having instant access to it. Uh, bullet uh, messages, which are also very nice and very interesting. As you're playing games, if you get a text message from somebody, uh, and it'll actually just put it in as somewhat of a nice little notification that pans across the display, as you're seeing right there. And it gives you access to be able to know that you got a message from somebody and what the message is without taking you away from the game. Uh, some of the other optimizations that we have in here as well is the ability of customizing not only the actual touch sampling, but also the ability of customizing the overall uh, interaction with the gaming system. So if I swipe over here from the left, we'll notice here we have the touch optimization. You're able to customize the touch sensitivity, the swipe sensitivity, but you're also able to game, uh, set up the game focus mode, the ability of turning that on. Uh, last but not least, the ability of turning on performance modes. So here you can jump in between the three different options. So here competitive mode. So you can customize that directly from here, game news. Uh, last but not least, the ability of customizing messages, WhatsApp, and of course that bullet feature that I mentioned to you guys, it actually currently supports the two, Messenger from uh, Facebook as well as the me uh, default messaging application. And you can customize how it actually kind of works through. We still have access to screen recording and of course messages and all of the different options in there. And then of course you get the metrics here into basically the percentage of frames per second, CPU and CPU options. Uh, the main thing that you want to keep in mind though is that the gaming system helps you optimize the gaming and of course we're going to jump in now to some PUBG Mobile, again uh, Call of Duty Mobile as well as uh, Modern Combat Versus and Asphalt 9.
Predator missile inbound. Captain's Boom! Headshot! Target's inside! As you saw there, the Dimensity 1000 Plus is more than capable of handling the gameplay experience here. Um, I do want to mention that in all of the experiences or all the videos that you guys saw, I was actually doing screen recording at the same time as playing it in performance mode or competition mode. Now we're going to jump into a speaker test. I have the volume set to 100% and we're going to play our favorite song, Jumbo by Alex Crindo, NCS release. You could definitely enjoy the music out of this again even though we don't have stereo speakers it still actually performs quite well when it comes down to the cameras we have a lot of different options in here this video unfortunately is not a full review of the camera application but what i would probably say is you're able to shooting 4k 60 frames sorry 4k 30 frames per second out of the back sensor the main 64 megapixel sensor and up to 1080p 30 frames per second there and as i'm sharing you guys some pictures there there's a few different modes as well within the camera app that enables us to have some ai functionality so i can definitely say that uh, the primary sensor on the back can give us 4k 30 frames per second and 30 1080p 30 frames per second on the front let's go ahead and jump in to a quick example of that we're going to start off with the front facing camera on the arena 5 pro uh, this is capable of providing us a 1080p 30 frames per second although it's a 32 megapixel sensor so hopefully in the future we'll see an update to that uh, but the overall experience should be pretty good there's a little bit of background noise going on in the in the distance so i'm, I'm not sure if you guys are going to pick it up but let's go ahead and switch over to the 4k 30 frames per second on the back facing sensor switching it over to the back facing sensor here the 64 megapixel sensor can give us 4k 30 frames per second that's going to be the maximum resolution uh, so no 8k or 60 frames per second but again the MediaTek 1000 plus is more than capable of giving us great images specifically with the primary 64 megapixel sensor here in the back and when we talk about special features, there's a lot of different modes that you're able to use here. There's Super Steady, Super Steady Pro, which is a new mode. And of course, there's the ability of using AI color, which as you could see here, uh, enables me to actually be the only color part of this video and everything behind me becomes basically uh, black and white. So there's also portrait mode and other options that you have been built in here to give you a lot more functional things in the I would say the arsenal of tools that they give you in the camera app. Reno 5 Pro 5G offers us a lot of different options. First and foremost, a large battery with really fast charging. We have a large display with 90 hertz refresh rate. Uh, the Dimensity 1000 Plus is a very capable processor. Now, I'm not going to say that this is going to be competing with any of the flagships of 2021. When I ran the benchmark, it was kind of comparable to what the Snapdragon 855 would probably be format. So according to Geekbench 5, but overall, anything I was able to throw at it, it worked really nice. There was no hiccups, no issues. Uh, the charging on this is ridiculously fast. Again, 65 watt with the SuperVook 2.0 is really, really nice. Uh, the new optimizations in ColorOS 11.1 were definitely very nice, especially in the gaming system. And that nice little uh, basically bubble message option that we get that kind of just basically goes across the display was very unique. Um, we still have the same features of, of what we had before with color os 11 but definitely more optimized in this one now of course make sure to let me know down in the comments what do you guys think of the brand new reno 5 pro 5g is this a smartphone that you guys are interested in and of course does it offer you guys uh, the best bang for the buck experience because again that's what reno is known for they're definitely a, an interesting combination of features and price that give us a really good well-rounded experience from oppo and of course the new reno line this is tk thank you very much for the support like and subscribe as usual and I'll see you guys in the next one.